Stand in the region number nine to address the assembly. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I rise today to represent the views of the concerned residents of the Rupununi region, yeah. region number nine, right. on the 2014 national budget. Some citizens wish to express their growing concern in relation to the development programs and policies of the government, but they are afraid of vicious reprisal. Members of Parliament are duly bound to reflect the wishes and wants of their constituencies. As one of the geographical representative of the residents of Region 9, I wish, I wish to discharge my obligation. Mr. Speaker, this year's theme of the 2014 budget is a better Guyana for all Guyanese with a grand sum of $220 billion. The question which looms large is whether the citizens were consulted in keeping with Article 13 of the Constitution, which states that the principal objective of the political system of the state is to establish an inclusionary democracy by providing increasing opportunities for the participation of citizens and their organizations in the management and decision-making decision -making processes of the state, with particular emphasis on those areas of decision-making that directly affect their well-being. Mr. Speaker, a better Guyana is a Guyana where all its citizens are meaningfully consulted and feel that they are participating in decisions that affect their livelihood. Mr. Speaker, in spite of all the boastings of the government about economic growth, I beg the question, economic growth for whom? All right. That so-called growth, growth is not evident among the ordinary citizens of the hinterland. It certainly is not evident among the citizens of the Rupununi. It is intimidation, victimization, and the rich gets richer and the poor gets poorer. A total disrespect for the integrity of most of the residents of the region. Mr. Speaker, the government speaks glowingly about the wonderful things that takes place in the Rupununi. I wish to mention some of them. The mega farm at Santa Fe in North Rupununi. The establishment of the learning channel. The fact that there are now lots of cars in the Rupununi. The construction of a 77.7 .7 million secondary school at Sand Creek in the South Central Rupununi. The recent purchase of two Brand new FG Wilson 750 generator for the Latin Power Company, Inc. Housing. The recent reconstruction of some roads in the communities of Latin and St. Ignatius. The unfinished bridge across the Rupununi River at Sand Creek. Fiber optic cable, OLPF. Mr. Speaker, from those projects that I have just listed, it seems like a lot is happening in Region 9. But that is an attempt to obfuscate the realities of life in these areas. Yeah. Agriculture. I wish to highlight some weaknesses in the area of agriculture. In the area of agriculture, the Regional Democratic Council of Region 9 has been requesting pertinent information in relation to the operation of the mega farm. The information that was sent was irrelevant, and when additional information was requested, the council was instructed to go to go invest. The fact of the matter is, Mr. Speaker, the residents have a legitimate concern regarding the type and levels of chemicals that is and will be used by the company. 
Mr. Speaker, on the question of pesticides used on the farm, the Honorable Minister of Agriculture provided the names of two chemicals used. Those are karate and pronto. In the rainy season, that entire area is one large sea of water. Naturally, when the water starts to recede, it will flow into the nearby rivers, creeks, and ponds. We have no way of knowing the effects those chemicals can have on the flora and fauna of the area, especially on aquatic life. <coughs> I am therefore concerned about whether or not any environmental assessment were conducted, and if so, what were the findings? Mr. Speaker, there is the experience of the neighboring Brazil in the Roraima area, where there was a similar exercise to the detriment of animals and people on that end. So as a result, we have a, a right <coughs> to be properly informed. It is not against development, but it must be done right. That's right. Mr. Speaker, there is need to safeguard our markets, as for example, our peanuts and other crops. They need to be protected so that we could be able to be just as economically strong as those farmers on the coast. Community agriculture development would be the way to go for the creation of sustainable food production system in keeping with the low carbon development strategy. Empowering the communities with confidence that there is a role for the communities to play in regional and national development. Companies create jobs, yes, for a few, but it does not do the same as communities being given the opportunity to find their own strength to contribute to regional development? Is the budget geared to support communities to develop a program to so do? Education. Mr. Speaker, I wish to turn my attention to education, and in particular, the learning channel. From a survey conducted by a council on the RDC Region 9, less than 5% in the central Rupununi this is less than 5% of the people in central Rupununi watches the learning channel. The main reason given for not watching is relevance to Region 9. So the reality, the reality is, Mr. Speaker, the, Mr. Speaker, I wish to deal with the 77.7 7 million secondary school in Sand Creek. Former President Jack Dio, just before he demitted office, promised the residents of South Central Rupununi that they would get a secondary school. He had also promised that the school would be built at Shulinab village, also known as Makushi village. The villagers cleared a plot of land in anticipation. Mm -hmm. When the contract was awarded, the residents learned that the location had changed to Sand Creek. In their haste to find a site, they chose one that is totally unsuitable for that purpose. Right. Mr. Speaker, the school is built at the foot of a mountain that has some huge boulders on its slope that can come loose due to erosion during the rainy season. Wow. There is not enough space for recreation for the students. That, Mr. Speaker, proves that the government of Guyana has no vision. Yeah. I wish... I wish to direct your attention to Proverbs 20, 23, verses 18, where it states that I quote, where there is no vision, the people perishes. Yes. <clears throat> perish, perish. Cut her off in the eye. But he that keepeth the law, happy he is. The government should be well advised to make a reality of this verse, and Guyana would indeed be a better Guyana. Yes. As to register their disapproval, some of the villagers of the area refuse to send their children to the school. The enrollment at the school as of January 2014 was as follows. Sun Creek, 81 children. Rukumoto, 9. Katunarib, 28. Sawariwao, 28. Shiriri, 6. 
Paternal 4, Baitun 2, Parikwaranao 4, Shulinab 24, Region 8, 45. A grand total of 219 children. Mr. Speaker, it is interesting to know that we have children coming all the way from North Pakaraima Mountains to the school at Sand Creek. Maybe the Honorable Minister of Education and Amerindian Affairs can enlighten this August body, how are the children fearing being so far away from their home, inclusive of their welfare? Mr. Speaker, these children were treated very shabbily last Christmas, a time when children ought to be with family. These children were taken to the students' hostel at St. Ignatius and left there for the holidays. What? No mommy, no daddy, no brother, no sister, and no relatives. Is that how we intend to have our young people enjoy a better life? <laughs> Mr. S Mr. Speaker, the time is overdue when the Rupununi should have a technical institute. The courthouse, which is still to be completed and operationalized, could have been a technical institute. Then we would not have had so many young delinquents and school dropouts. Mr. Speaker, you may remember last year that the Honorable Minister of Education stated that the technical school for Letham was to be constructed soon. I wish to improve, implore upon the Honorable Member to treat this as an urgent need for the year 2014 by honoring her promise. Amor Indian Lands. Mr. Speaker, the budget has been strangely silent on the issue of land demarcation and extension of Amerindian lands in the face of many unresolved issues. There are a number of communities within the entire country that need immediate attention. We have unfinished work in the region. For example, the South Savannas, the North Savannas, Chinese Amerindian village, in Region 1, the confusion at Maruka, the Santa Rosa boundary demarcation in Region 1, the Amerindians of Mbamadai who have claimed to land from Mbamadai right up to Chai Chai Foot have virtually no access to their lands. Miners are given preference over them. This has led to untold hardship for the people whose women folks are fo forced into unsavory activities inclusive of prostitution to provide for their families. Mining also has done irreparable damage to, to their environment, especially the main source of water, Kako, for example, and the Mazaruni River. This river is heavily polluted from up to Chai Chai Mountain, right down past Kamaram, whose recent complaint the press in this regard. It must be noted here, Mr. Speaker, that the residents have lodged numerous complaints to the GGMC without any redress. For all the riches that is plundered from the interior, what do we have in return but our intellectual rights violated? Mr. Speaker, the government boasts of what good they have been doing for Amerindians. The YEAP program has been used to manipulate and indoctrinate our people. Intimidation and victimization is the order of the day in communities. The CSOs have been made to disrespect the village councils. What? Mr. Chair, Mr. Speaker, a monster is being created, which the government will not be able to feed, similar to that of Gaisuko, dependency. Communities are divided through this system. There was no mention of training legal minds, a key component to deal with ever-growing concerns of indigenous rights and development. This and similar issues were not addressed in this budget. Mr. Speaker, we need our lands not only for this generation, but for, for all our future generations. We have been the closest to, to the lands for centuries, and we have preserved it. We know how to do it. That is our life. And if it, it is taken away from us and destroyed, as it is in the case presently, then a whole people will be threatened into extinction. We have led the way of the LCDS and must be properly compensated with the funds that are made available for such activities by using our names without ethnic. 
tourism, Mr. Speaker, is also a very, very useful opportunity for us, and I must sort of commend the minister for looking into that area. We have the potentials, and we need more funding to be spent, more funding and expertise to help our indigenous communities. We need to see in the budget the opportunity for clearing some of the issues that avoid us for accessing funding from banks when if we would want to. At the moment, it is not possible. Mr. Speaker, the foremost concern of the residents of the Rupununi is an all-weather road linking Linden with the Rupununi. Construction of that road began in 1989. By 1991, it took all but three hours to travel from Gorbikari to Letem in a Model M Bedford truck over some 200 km. And now it is up to six hours be to Letem. Between Georgetown to Letem, it takes 10 to 12 hours it used to take 10 to 12 hours. Now it's about 20 hours or more. The company contracted to build that road, Paranapanema, a Brazilian company, was rudely evicted from this country in 1993 without a chance to complete the section from Kurbikari to Linden. Mr. Speaker, this was. Mr. Speaker, this was a brand new road inherited by the PPPC government, who, who definitely lacks the engineering skills to even maintain the same. <laughs> Mr. Speaker, this road was left unattended from 1993 until it deteriorated in 1998. What? On the member, you have five minutes within which to. The road is the lifeline of the Rupununi and must be upgraded and upgraded immediately if the quality of life of the Rupununi is to improve. Money spent on the road yearly destroys its foundation and a waste of valuable resources. What needs to be done, Mr. Speaker, is to use the same money with a little more and pave the road incrementally like Brazil did with its road from Bovista to Bumfin. Yes. Or ensure that companies are equipped with engineers and proper building equipment for doing a good laterite road. <laughs> every driver, every passenger, and road users are saying that this trail has no more space for holes. Even the holes are getting holes. <laughs> <laughs> this brings me, this brings me, Mr. Speaker, to the reconstruction of roads in Letem and Saint Ignatius. I said reconstruction because every year we are doing the same road in the same area. The method of road construction and the contractors need serious reviewing to ensure that our roads last while aiming at value for money. Mr. Speaker, the issue of power outage in Letem and its environment continues in spite of the purchase of two brand new generators. Mr. Speaker, the regional health system is in a better shape only for the dedication of the staff region-wide. Where the staff, were the staff not committed, we would have had witnessed a, a total collapse of the system. Mr. Speaker, please allow me to applaud the health workers of Region 9. They often work under some extreme conditions, yeah. often ridiculed by residents for the poor facilities they are made to work with, and for which they are blamed. They have and are working and must be properly compensated so that they can help the residents to live a better life. Exactly. Mr. Speaker, last year I referred to the rate of referrals to neighboring Bovista in Brazil. That situation, Mr. Speaker, has not changed. We still have a high rate of referrals from much touted state-of-the-art hospital. The hospital is just not equipped to deal with such emergencies. The, tr trouble, the troubling aspect of these referrals, Mr. Speaker, is that high health rates, it is almost very high risk to, 
of life for our residents to be referred to Brazil. Notwithstanding the boasting of the Minister of Health during the budget debate, the answer to the problem is to have a resident surgeon based at Letem Hospital. All right. Not visiting teams once or twice per year, oh. which we are thankful for. This is not the answer. We have a few native Rapunonians that were and are being trained in Cuba. Maybe one of them can be selected to be trained as a general surgeon. Yes. Another measure that can be employed to provide improved health care is the upgrade of some health posts, health centers, and some health centers to cottage hospitals with adequate and modern equipment. Mr. Speaker, the health system is plagued with multiple problems. And I could go on and on. And on and on. <laughs> Mr. Speaker, housing has numerous issues. Housing lots should be at least 100 by 100. And Mr. Speaker, the residents would like to know what is the policy for issuing lands and what is the real cost for housing lots. Mr. Speaker, I have outlined, albeit briefly, some of the issues that are affecting hinterland communities. These issues are in no way exhaustive. There are so many issues that confront us in the hinterland which we intend to address at various forums. Those highlighted today represents but a sample of those issues. And I would implore the government to sit and talk with, not to, residents of these communities to see the hurt and despair that they they're feeling. Yes. Handouts and handouts are not the answer. Go In on, most cases, on. the government rushes to address the effects of our problems, but fail to see the, the cause of these problems. Mr. Speaker, it is sad to see daily our basic human rights are being violated. I see good money spent to keep our young people under political control and division. And this budget has not been designed for a better Guyana for all Guyanese. Hence, Mr. Speaker, until and unless I'm given form guarantees that the issues outlined here will be taken on board, a better Guyana for all Guyanese seems dim. Your best is not good enough. How could you do the right thing when you don't know what is right? <laughs> You have, to, you, you have to go and come again. Thank you very much. Go and come again.